Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to bring your AI agent into Slack using N8N. We'll go step by step through the process so you know exactly how to bring your AI assistants into Slack. You can easily take these concepts and expand them to create sophisticated automations for your own team or even build valuable solutions for clients who are looking to streamline their Slack workflows. My name's Owen. I have over 15 years experience as a software engineer, manager and director building and scaling software systems. I help people leverage AI to build real systems that free up time and make money. I'm going to walk you through this step by step. So let's get started. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is the overall shape of this automation. So to integrate Slack into your workflow using NA10, essentially what you need is a trigger. And this is going to listen for any mentions of your automation or your bot inside Slack. And then if it detects a mention, the text that you send is going to get piped into an AI agent. The AI agent here can do anything you like. So the purpose of this video is really to show you how to integrate Slack and N8N together. Um, but obviously this AI agent can do anything you like. You can add any kind of custom tools. You could trigger a more complex workflow. We're doing a very simple agent today, which is just using the Google Calendar tools to create and read appointments in your calendar. But as I say, you could extend this in any way you like. Once we have the, uh, once we have the response in the AI agent, we're going to push this into a Slack formatter. The reason we have a formatter for this automation is that Slack has its own unique flavor of markdown. Um, and so if you want your text to look good inside Slack, uh, what happens is the AI agent will generate fairly just normal markdown and that won't render correctly inside Slack. So I have a custom step which will take the output of the AI agent. It will format it nicely. And then when it goes into Slack, it will look good. And then finally, we just push our message back into Slack. Okay, so the plan for today, we're going to create a Slack app and we're going to get a token for our bot. We're going to trigger an AI agent inside N8N when we get a message from our bot. And then finally, we're just going to take the response and push it back into N8N. This is a great starting point for any kind of automation. You can obviously bring AI into your Slack workspace. You can trigger uh, any kind of automation. If you're a software team, you could trigger builds, you could get reports. If you want to have a, a RAG agent, you could get HR policy guidelines. You could ask questions. You can basically do whatever you want with this uh, automation. Slack is a really good place to build automations because teams spend so much of their time inside Slack and many teams are familiar with using bots inside Slack. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is basically how this automation works in practice. I have a Slack workspace here. I've already created a, a Slack application and I already created the workflow. So what's going to happen is when I mention my bot, it's going to trigger the workflow. We're going to send the message from the bot to an AI agent. We have a prompt here which says you are a helpful Slack assistant. We give the assistant the current time because if you remember, AI agents don't have access to the current time or they don't have context about what the date is. Um, we have a series of tools that we've given our agent and then we've just given some instructions about how to use those tools. Okay, so I'm going to ask my bot. I'm going to say, hey, at Jen, uh, what meetings are in my calendar today? All right, perfect. So we've got a response back from our agent. So we can obviously query for our calendar. We can also go ahead and create calendar events. So what I'm going to say is, uh, hey, hey, Jen, can you create a calendar event today at, let's do 3 p.m.? 3 p.m. for 30 minutes call it uh, study time. All right, so the agent's now asking me for confirmation. It's saying, um, could you let me know if you'd like add, to add any additional details? So as so a location or description, I'm just going to go ahead and create it. Uh, thanks, at Jen. Just go ahead and create the meeting. All right, perfect. So it's gone ahead and created the meeting event. It's even provided a link to the actual meeting as well. So you can see here in my calendar, I have a meeting scheduled study time at 3 p.m., exactly what we asked our agent to do. Obviously, this is just a demonstration. Like I said, you can do anything within Slack here. You can connect this to any other automations you like. This is just for a demo. All right, so let's let's actually go and build this ourselves. So the first thing you're going to need to do to use Slack with N8N is to create an application. If you go to api.slack.com slash apps, you will see this page, and we're going to click on create a new app. We're going to click on from scratch and we're going to give our 
bot or our application a name. I'm going to call this one Amy, and I'm going to invite it to the Leverage AI Slack workspace, and I'm going to click Create. Okay, so the first thing you're going to see is this app credentials screen. We're going to need to get a token and set up the workflow, so let's do that. Okay, one thing I forgot to do was to add a profile image. So we're going to come down here, we're going to add an icon. We're going to add a photo, just so that now our bot has some kind of image. We can recognize it in Slack. And I cl click on Save Changes. All right, so let's go ahead and create our workflow. So the first thing we need is a Slack step. So we're going to have a Slack trigger. And we are going to trigger this on bot app mention. You can obviously have any kind of trigger here, but this one for this demo, we're going to trigger this workflow when we mention our bot in a Slack channel. So let's do this. And what we need to do now is connect our credentials and notice there's also a webhook URL. So the way that we trigger these, these workflows using Slack and NAN is we need to have a webhook URL. I'll show you how to set that up. The important thing to pay attention to is there are two URLs. There's the test URL and the production URL. So as we're building this out, we're going to use the test URL. But then obviously, as you put this into production, you want to switch over to the production URL. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get a credential. All right, so what we need to do is before we can create our OAuth token, we need to define the scopes. And scopes are basically just the permissions that you're going to give to your bot. So any kind of bot that you install into Slack, you need to explicitly grant it the permission to join a channel or write a message or read the contents of a channel. So we're going to have to add some scopes. I'm going to keep it pretty simple for here. Obviously, you can refer to the documentation in terms of what scopes or permissions you're going to need. The first one we're going to need is app mentions read. So we're going to add this one. We also need uh, channels join. So we need the ability to join a channel. We also need the ability to read a channel. And then we also need the ability to write into a chat. So we're going to say chat write. And we also, we're going to add a groups, groups read as well. There are all kinds of other permissions and scopes you can add here, such as uh, instant message permissions as well. But we're only going to be using this automation in the context of a channel. So this should be enough for now. And if we go up here now, we can create a token. We're going to click install into leverage AI. This is just checking the permissions that you granted previously. So let's go ahead and authorize this. All right, perfect. So what you'll see here is we now have a token. So I'm going to copy the token and we're going to go to our automation. We're going to click on credential, create a new credential. We're going to paste in the access token and click save. And if that worked correctly, you should see this green confirmation message at the top. It all, look, all looks good. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is to figure out what we trigger this on. We're going to say bot app mention. There are other things that can trigger this, but we're going to just do it on app mention for now. Uh, we're also going to say watch the whole workspace. You can either ask this bot to only watch a certain channel, or you can ask it to w watch the whole workspace. I'm going to do all workspace for now. All right, so what we need to do next is to configure our event subscriptions. So within our Slack trigger, we need to get the webhook URL. We're going to click on the test URL, and we're going to click on test step so that we're listening. And then I'm going to paste the URL into here. If you're not listening on the webhook, you're going to need to retry this request if, if it's not listening. We also need to subscribe to bot events as well. So I'm going to subscribe to app mention events. And then it's really important because I forget to do this sometimes. You do need to click save changes or it won't register. All right. So now we have our event subscription. We have our credentials. So we should have everything ready to go. Um, so what we're going to do here, <clears throat> let's just test out this trigger. So I'm going to click stop. I'm going to start listening now on this trigger. And I'm going to go into my Slack channel. I've got a demo channel. I'm going to invite Amy which is our bot. I'm going to invite Amy to our channel. And then I'm just going to say, hey, at Amy. So what we're doing here, we're just checking that the um, event was registered. So let's go back to our workflow. You can see here it did trigger, and this is the message that came through. You can see we have the text. Uh, so hey, at Amy. Um, so this is looking good. All right, so now that we have our trigger, what we're going to do is we're going to add an AI agent. 
we're going to define our own prompt. And for the prompt, we're just going to pass in the actual text that came from Slack. So this is the message we're sending to the assistant. And we also want to define a system message as well. I'm just going to keep this really, really simple for now. And I'm going to say, you're a helpful assistant. Always be cheerful and helpful. All right. So we also need to add a chat model. I'm going to add in Gemini 2.0 Flash because I think that's quite a good model. Let's find 2.0 Flash Experimental. All right, so the next thing we're going to add is memory. If you think about a chatbot, you need to have a way of remembering the conversation history. If you think about the calendar example, where we asked our bot to do something and it came back with another question and then we responded again, the chatbot needs to remember the conversational history. So it needs to know what you said previously, essentially. And the way we do that is we add memory to our agent. We're going to add simple memory and we're going to define our own a uh, custom key. This can be anything. I'm just going to use the channel key. The channel ID is a key. And I'm going to set this context window length to be five. This just means it's going to remember the past five interactions you've had. Okay, so now we have our basic agent. Let's test this out and see if it works. So I'm going to click on test workflow. And I'm going to go back into Slack. Hey, uh, Amy, how are you doing? So now if we go back into our workflow, you can see it triggered successfully. And this is the response. Hey there, I'm doing great and ready to help. Uh, as you can see, it's following the prompt. It's being cheerful and helpful, which is great. Um, so now that we have our response, what we need to do is push this back into Slack. And this is easy to do. What we need to do is click on Slack. We're going to add a uh, message action and the action is going to be send a message and the send the message to is going to be a channel and the channel is going to be the YouTube demo channel. But I think actually, let's just do this for now. Um, we want this to be dynamic really because your bot may be invited to any channel. So actually, let's see if we can make this an expression. Uh, what we want to do is have the channel ID and the ID is down here. So let's do that. I think that's better. Uh, it's going to be a simple text message and the message text is just going to be the response from the agent. So what we need to do is pull this, pull out this output here. So this is going to be the message text. And let's just test this step. That has sent a message. So let's go back into Slack. And you can see here now our bot has responded. Hey there, I'm doing great and ready to help. How can I brighten your day? Perfect. All right, so we pretty much have everything we need working here. Just the final thing is that when we respond from our AI agent, you'll see here it's just plain text and this is fine. But if our agent suddenly starts returning Markdown or some other format, it may get messed up in um in the slack window so slack has its own version of markdown which you should be aware of all right so here's the documentation so slack has its own uh its own kind of formatting which it calls mrk down which is like a variation of markdown just to be aware uh, there is a guide to this you can either maybe do something within your prompt or what I've done in a previous automation is to have my AI agent return markdown and then I have a formatter which was written in code to transform the output. I'm just going to quickly show you what that looks like. All right, so this is the Slack formatter. Because this AI agent is returning regular markdown, I have a formatter and this was written in code. This code was actually generated by AI and if you're not familiar with writing code, you might want to skip this step. If you're comfortable writing code, you can do something like this where I'm just replacing um, the the output or the, or the tags that are coming out of my AI agent and I'm just turning them into the correct format. This is working quite well for me. Um, this is one way to do it. The other way to do it is maybe in your prompt, you can ask for the output to be minimal. You can ask for it to be in plain text or something like that. So you can also do this in your prompt as well. All right, so now we have everything we need. Um, the final thing we need to do to take this into production, 
uh, we need to change our webhook URL. If you remember, we're using a test URL and every time we're testing out our workflow, we have to click on this step. All right, so the next thing we need to do is change our webhook URL. So we're going to go up here and we're going to click on production URL. We're going to copy the production URL. We're going to go back into our Slack application. We're going to change the uh, the request URL here. So I'm going to put this into here. And it's saying that we're not responding because I need to listen. So I'm going to click on test step and I'm going to click on retry. For some reason, this isn't working. Why is this not working? Okay, I think I know why. Because what we need to do now is put this into production. So now the production URL is listening. We go back here, we click on retry, and yep, it looks good. Um, remember, you always need to click on save changes. This keeps catching me out. So click on save changes. So now we're listening for the production URL. So we're no longer in test mode. You should be able to see the executions up here. So let's just try this out and see if it's working correctly. So let's go back into our Slack channel. Hey, uh, Amy, how are you doing? Okay, perfect. So it's working correctly. We don't have to keep clicking on the buttons. This is going to keep, keep working. Um, that should be the final step in the automation. So now that you have your AI agent set up and working correctly, obviously you can start adding additional tools here. If you're working in a team, there are many things you might want to automate. You can go in and plug in anything you like here. You can give your AI agent access to your tools, your data, whatever you like, it, whatever you like, it can do that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.